Hi, I am Kayla Barnes Lenz, an expert in female longevity. I've been studying this topic for over a decade and I do a ton of self experimentation or N of one testing on myself. This is part of my lab series and I'm super excited to walk you through some of the labs I do. You can find all these labs on herdcall.kaylabarnes.com. But I'm excited today to go deep on one called the Micronutrient Panel by Vitamin Wellness. So we all know that we eat foods to get nutrients, right? We take supplements to get nutrients. And it's really easy to just be excited about every single supplement that I share or any other individual shares. But the best way to optimize your nutrient status is by actually testing it. We know that a really short-term nutrient deficiency or less than optimal nutrients may not be ultra harmful, but we know if you're running a long-term nutritional deficit, it can really wreak havoc on your health. So there's a difference between nutritional deficiencies and insufficiencies. So our body, if you have a deficiency in vitamin C, we can develop scurvy and that could happen pretty quickly. But if we have nutritional insufficiencies, this can just not be giving our body the optimal amount of nutrients that we need for performance, health span, and definitely for longevity. For women, it can contribute to things like uh, menstrual irregularities, uh, reduced fertility. It can also contribute to chronic diseases. So if we want to be in optimal health for now and the future, we really want to focus on improving our nutritional status. And so this is tested yet by Viber Wellness. Love the company. I'll include links in the show notes, but I'm going to walk you through what I'm looking for in this test and some of my results. So this is a test that I did a couple of months ago. So this is going to look at both serum and blood levels of these nutrients. The Vibrant Wellness Micronutrient Panel looks at serum or extracellular nutritional status and then the intracellular or the blood status of these nutrients. So we have both what's in the cell and what's outside of the cell, what's really important to know. The serum levels are the nutrients that are circulating in the blood plasma at the time of the test. It reflects recent dietary intake um, and availability for immediate use. Then we have the intracellular or the white blood cells, and this reflects longer term nutritional status, uh, mostly over the course of like four to six months. So your serum can be normal, but if your intracellular level is low, then you might be consuming the nutrients, but you're not actually efficiently absorbing or transporting that nutrient. This can be due to gut issues, inflammation, or mitochondrial issues, or toxicity uh, issues. If your intracellular is normal, but your extracellular or serum is low, this could just mean a temporary dip due to uh, nutritional changes or change in supplements, um, but your long-term stores are adequate. So now let's get into my report. First, we're going to be looking at just a high level overview of micronutrient status. So this breaks down bone, joint, and muscle health. Um, I'm at 100. Cardiovascular health, I'm also at 100. The um, gastrointestinal barrier, also at 100. Liver detoxification, I'm at 100. And then mitochondrial function, skin, and anti-aging, I am at 85. That's actually because of high vitamin B12. So a few days prior to this test, I had a Myers cocktail. Um, and so I blood and serum levels of vitamin B12, I believe were elevated, but definitely my B12 is elevated here. And then we had neurological cognitive function and mood, which is also slightly reduced. It's at 85 out of 100, just like the prior one because of this high vitamin B12 level. So context also matters here. I knew that I had an infusion of B12 through an IV few days prior to this lab. So we know that my B12 levels are probably normal, um, but it's important to know this. So right off the bat, we're going to get into something that's out of range, which is this vitamin B12. So we have the current level being 2000 um, up in the serum, and then the current cellular is 5.9. So the cellular, uh, you know, is within the reference range, but the serum is much higher than the reference range. And this tracks with what we just spoke about, about the serum levels being recent exposures and then the cellular levels being long-term stores. So now we're getting into some other micronutrients. So these are a couple of my blood cell counts. Um, then we get into fatty acids and omega-3 and 6. So we have AA. I'm not going to list every single one of these because you'll be able to see it on the screen as well. But we have um, DHA, DPA, EPA, LA, omega-3 index, total omegas, and total omega-6s. 
So I like to keep my omega-3 index above 11. The research shows anything above eight is great for longevity. Um, so when we look at my omega levels, these are all fairly good. We're within the um, optimal range here that they identified. So I am excited about that. Might want to boost up um, the omega-3. So my omega index here is over eight, which I typically like it to be more so around 11. Uh, I do want to boost that up a little bit just so it's a bit more optimal, but the studies show for longevity that anything over eight omega index is great for longevity outcomes. The next thing that we're going to look at here is amino acids. So we have arginine, aspergine, citrulline, glutamine, isoleucine, leucine. We have serine and valine. So if we look at my results here, all of my results are within the green zone, which is good, but there is a little bit of room for improvement um, in a few of these levels. So what I do then is I look at these labs with my medical team and then we say, okay, here's a couple amino acids, for example, or omegas that we can actually incorporate into your next protocol. So we're not just guessing here, we're going off of my actual labs. After amino acids, we have things like minerals, so calcium, chromium, copper, copper, zinc ratio, iron, magnesium, manganese, zinc. We know a lot of these minerals are super important for thyroid health. So really important for us women to be paying attention to our mineral status. And obviously the best way to know is to definitely test. We see the serum and cellular levels here of all of my different minerals. Uh, super important to keep those optimized. Most, most of these are in pretty good range. There's a couple that I might want to bump up just a little bit. Um, looks like my cellular copper stores are a tab on the low side. So these are things that I could take into consideration for the future. The next thing that we have here is metabolites. So we have carnitine, choline, inositol, NMA. So Again, all these are looking to be in a decent range. There are a few that are a little bit on the lower side. Um, and then we get into antioxidants. So we have CoQ10, he has cysteine, glutathione, and selenium. So again, all these are within proper range. Um, might want to boost up my glutathione here a little bit. Might want to boost up my uh, selenium here a little bit because these are on the lower ends. But this is a lab that you would go over with a medical provider. I just want to give you the details of what I'm looking for and also, you know, some information on what you could be looking for as well. Then vitamins, we look at fully, you look at vitamin A, vitamin B1, and then we see the B12, which is totally off the charts. Um, the reference range here is about 232 to 1245, and I'm over 5,000 on the serum. Then we get into B2, which for me, you know, I'm on the lower end of optimal and normal here. So we want to definitely boost that up a little bit. I may already made these interventions after receiving this test. In general, some of my B vitamins were a little on the low side. So vitamin B3, B5, B6, vitamin C is looking pretty good. Vitamin D is at 82. So, um, Keeping high levels of vitamin D, I would say, you know, between 60 and 70 to 80 is always where I want to be. So honestly, with 82, I think it's great there. I normally don't get over, you know, 90. And once you get over 100, you can get into toxic ranges. So you do want to be careful. So vitamin D is looking good. Vitamin E, vitamin K1, vitamin K2. Then we get to electrolytes. So we have potassium, sodium. And that is the end of the test. So this is really important and I think great information. Um, all of these, if you are struggling with any chronic health issues as well, you know, might be able to give your provider a lot more insight as to why something may be occurring. So just wanted to do a quick little overview of this uh, vibrant wellness micronutrient panel. You just one or two times per year, um, you know, more often better, especially if you're having dietary or nutritional changes. But I think optimizing nutrient status for women is, you know, one of the most important things we can do. I think optimizing gut health is incredibly important, probably first line, looking at comprehensive, um, more basic labs, just high level overview of hormones, lipids, uh, blood cell counts, things of that nature. Um, and then we can get into these more advanced tests like a total toxic burden or the nutrient status. So I will link the tests below. And if you're interested in receiving more uh, female longevity content and posting YouTube videos every single week, so I'd love to subscribe. If you found this information helpful, would love for you to share it, leave a comment or a like. It means so much. And I will see you on the next video.